Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and we're back. It's the new season. Let's see if we can get you in the top 5% just by copying these instructions I'm going to show you. Last season I ran this series but I did my own thing. I, I had lots of fun doing crazy transfers for my team but I finished outside the top 5% and people who followed this system finished within the top 5% globally. So this year I'm going to come along for the ride and I'm going to follow this system. So let's see how it goes. In case you've not done this before, you don't know what this is about. There are some content creators out there that would talk about lots of different players and oh, you could do this, you could do that. And when you've watched them enough, you kind of think, yeah, there's no way you'd ever choose that player. So what I'm trying to do here is give you a small selection of players. You can choose any combination you want and you basically should do all right. And that's about it. OK, let's get going, see how it works. In order to make this 5% system work, I need to narrow down the number of players that you can choose from. That necessarily means there's some very good players that aren't in this system. But this is all about finishing top 5% and not necessarily having your favourite players. So we start by looking at the goalkeepers. You want to choose two of these. So the first one we have here is Edison. Now for this week, and I may only do it this week, I'm not sure, I've colour coded the next four fixtures, how they're going to look for how many points they may get, etc. Green is good, red is bad, and there's a whole shade of colours in between. And you'll notice a lot of the players, there's not much of a mix of the colours. But there's a reason for that and there's logic and I'll explain that as I go along. So Edison, he's five and a half million. On paper he should do well. Man City should keep a lot of clean sheets. But Edison does not get many bonus points because the defence doesn't let the ball get to him very often. I had Edison quite a lot last season and he let me down and I regret having him. However, on paper he's a good choice and he's okay to have if you want him. A downside of choosing Edison is he takes up one of the Man City slots and if in a couple of weeks time we decide Foden or Grealish or someone like that who's not in the system now is really good and we want him, you may have to sell Edison to free up a Man City slot. But he's in there, he's a perfectly good keeper to have. Next is Onana. I don't have a picture for him yet and I may be saying his name wrong and there might be quite a few players that I'm saying wrong but hopefully you know who I mean. So Man United, new keeper. You can see his colours are slightly darker than Edison so that implies over the next four weeks he may not do quite as well but he is only 5 million. He may be a lot of fun. Man United every now and then do have a keeper that's a lot of fun. He may be one of them. He may be a bit risky and run up the pitch and lose the ball and leave an open goal behind him. But we'll see. Ramsdale, Arsenal, bit dodgy, bit of a tricky choice because they've just bought Rare, I believe, and we don't know who the first choice keeper is going to be. Is it going to be Ramsdale? Is it going to be Rare? Are they going to swap and change? So Ramsdale's a bit risky, but if you choose Ramsdale and then he gets dropped, doesn't get played, we just change your goalkeeper. Something to say, I wanted to say a little. There's lots I wanted to say. It's all in my head and I'm, I won't remember it all. In FPL there are 38 weeks and there are two parts of the season where you can go a bit crazy and do some rogue choices, in my opinion. The first is right at the beginning of the season. So if you want to do try something crazy, like no Haaland or maybe two or three very expensive players, now is the time to try it because if it goes horribly wrong and you're 150 points behind after three weeks, you just use your first wild card and play conservative and you'll gradually catch up. The other time you can go rogue is the last two or three weeks of the season if you want to do a final push because you're not doing as well as you want to or you want to try and go higher and you're willing to risk it then you can take big chances. But from about game week 5 to about game week 34, 35 we kind of have to play conservative. So the reason I'm saying that is subs uh, transfers at the moment if you buy Rams down he doesn't play minus 4 if we need to get rid of him it's not a big deal. Something about FPL is I, for my own team, like doing crazy things. And I know it's a bad thing to do, but then I enjoy it. So I've still, I've genuinely not decided on my team and it goes live in a couple of days time. Flecken, new Brentford keeper. He should be pretty solid. He's okay. Now we're going for cheap ones now. Flecken's four and a half million. Johnson for Palace, four and a half million. And Pickford for Everton, four and a half million. Any of these could get a string of clean sheets or they could go five six seven games without clean sheets at all but they are cheaper and they will save you money and when you put your draft together 
you will find that you could do with a little bit extra money. You have 100 million to start with. If you can save half a million, that may be very, very good because next week you may want to buy a player and he's already gone up in value and the extra half million makes a big difference. But don't cripple your team to save half a million. If you get a team together and it costs 100 million, that's fine, just go with that. And then finally, another dodgy one, Turner. He's currently an Arsenal keeper, so he's down as an Arsenal player, but there's a good chance he's going to go to Forest. If he does go to Forest, he's 4 million, he's great to be sitting on your bench and he frees up a lot of money. But if he doesn't go to Forest, he stays at Arsenal, he takes up an Arsenal slot. And a lot of teams are going to have three Arsenal players and you don't really want to waste one on Turner. So I've put him in here because it may be by the time you pick your team and we're right near the deadline, we know he's at Forest and he's shifted to a Forest player, in which case he's good to buy. Or there may not be three other Arsenal players you want to buy and you're happy to have him taking up one of your Arsenal slots. So of these uh, seven keepers, you want to choose two of these and I genuinely don't know which two I'm going to choose yet. For the defenders, I'm going to show you two pages of defenders. And what I'm suggesting this year is you choose at least one defender from each page, but you have to choose a total of five. So Trent Alexander-Arnold, he's 8 million, which is massively expensive. There are lots of players cheaper than him in the midfield that are very good, and he's a defender. However, he does have the chance of getting some very high scores. Liverpool defensively do look leaky. They are going to let in goals. So I wouldn't expect much from the clean sheets, but from the assists and bonus points, he could do very well. Their first game is away to Chelsea. So there's a good chance of not getting much then. But then they're home to Bournemouth. Fourth game is home to Villa. So chances of clean sheets there, plus plenty of assist opportunity. Next is Trippier. Now, the thing with Newcastle is their first game at home to Villa. That's OK. But then the next three games away to Man City, home to Liverpool, away to Brighton. They're all quite tricky. So there'll be a lot of managers that don't start with any Newcastle players and then tend on maybe game week four, five rather, to bring in Newcastle players. So that's an OK tactic. It just means you're booking in a transfer. The thing with Trippier, because of the way he's so skillful with the dead ball etc free kicks whatever else he can get assists even in a difficult game so even so Newcastle might not keep a clean sheet for four or five games and yet every week he's getting five six points so even though Newcastle probably won't get many clean sheets he's actually an okay player to have but those two are very expensive defenders now I've got Chilwell and James here for Chelsea I personally think Chelsea and Tottenham are going to have very good seasons so I am thinking of loading up my team with Chelsea and Tottenham players. I could be hopelessly wrong. And their first two fixtures are at home to Liverpool and away to West Ham. So a reasonable chance of no clean sheet there. But they both have a reasonable chance of attacking returns. However, Chilwell and James, and particularly James, are quite injury prone. So if you buy James, it is buyer beware. He could get injured, go off after five minutes, and you're then forced to do a sub. However... Uh, he may not get injured, he may be fit the whole season. But he he is one of these players that unfortunately seems to have lots of uh, issues with injuries. And then we've got Shaw for Man United. Games 1 and 3 are quite nice. Wolves against Forest. Uh, Stones for Man City. The thing with any Man City player, apart from maybe at the moment Edison and Haaland, it's hard to be sure if they're going to play now, if Stones gets past the 16 minutes mark, which he has a good chance of doing, and he's on a clean sheet, you get the six points. But if they're winning 4-0 at half-time, there's a chance he's going to come off. And of course, there's a chance he won't keep a clean sheet. But Man City's opening games against Burnley, Newcastle, Sheffield United, Fulham are very nice. So a lot of managers are going to be having three Man City players. Whichever Man City player you get, though, you're running a risk. We don't know who the defenders are going to be. Well, I don't anyway. A Kanji's half a million cheaper. You'll see his colours are slightly closer to red than Stones is at. Now, if you look at other content creators or even the official site, you'll see fixtures, green, red, orange, maybe yellow. And it's not actually that helpful. So, for example, I'm going to show you Botman later for Newcastle. He's another Newcastle defender, but his colours are all slightly closer to red because it does make a difference 
who the player is, it does make a difference what the position is. So again, a Liverpool, a normal Liverpool defender, their colours are generally going to be closer to red than a Liverpool attacker. Because even though Liverpool leak goals, they've always got a chance of scoring goals. So the, the granularity I find on the official site for the, how difficult some, uh, a match is can be very misleading because you see, oh, this player's got green, green, this player's got red, red, and it doesn't allow for the fact of, well, who is the player? And a green may be they're going to get four points and a red is three points, and actually it's not worth crippling your team to get that extra one point. And of course, the truth is we don't know how many points these players are going to get. It's all about having players you think are going to do all right and holding them and not knee-jerking by swapping players in and out. And the last one is their stupid man. Only 5 million Brighton. Now, Brighton's first three fixtures are very good. They possibly the fourth. It depends how Newcastle do. But then in the next six games, I think they've got four difficult ones. So there's going to be a number of managers who do buy Brighton players, but they may well offload them. But if we get things horribly wrong or you want to make lots of subs, it's fine to use your first wild card early on if you want to, like game week two, three, four, five. I often use it then. I've never won the FPL, of course, but don't worry about it. But the thing with Estupnan is because a lot of managers have him, if he does keep a clean sheet and you don't have him, that's a lot of points working against you. So, for example, if 50% of teams have Estupnan, he scores six points and you don't have him, that's effectively three points you don't get, so you're on minus three to start with. But if you didn't have him and you had a Kanji and a Kanji got, also got six points, it doesn't make any difference. Not sure if that helped. But anyway, there we go. So you want to have at least one of these defenders. You also want to have at least one of these defenders. Gabriel from Arsenal. Home to Forest, way to Palace, home to Fulham. There's a reasonable good chance of getting a clean sheet, possibly some attacking returns. He's a very popular defender and very good. Poro from Tottenham. Now you'll see his colours are getting closer to red. He is 5 million. However, look how enthusiastic he is. And if for nothing else, just for his enthusiasm, he might be worth a punt. Saliba for Arsenal. you see again his colours aren't quite as good as Gabriel because Gabriel's reckoned to have a slightly better chance of getting an attacking return. Botman for Newcastle, 4.5 million. Colwell for Chelsea, 4.5 there's expectations he's probably going to be starting and getting the minutes. The downside of getting Colwell is it is taking up one of your Chelsea spots, but he's the sort of player you can buy and put on your bench because we need to have players on the bench that are likely to get points, but they're cheap enough to put on the bench. We don't worry about them. Ideally, the way I see it for myself, I want to have three players that are going to play, but I'm happy for them to sit on the bench every week. What's difficult is when you have benching decisions where there's these two good players and you don't know which one to bench. I'd rather have a slightly better player over here, slightly worse player, go to the bench because it's less to think about. Pinnock for Brentford, four and a half. Bulldog for Sheffield United and Bayer for Burnley. The last two are four million. All of these I'd be expecting to get game time unless there's any breaking news. So when you're choosing your team, one way of doing it is... To start off thinking, right, I'm going to get two very, very cheap defenders, then put in the players you want. What you don't want to be doing is getting 15 players that are all mediocrely, they're all kind of OK. You have to make sure you get at least two of the cheap players from this that you're going to be sitting on the bench. Regarding the midfielders, choose one of these. Salah. Look at that. 12.5 million. See how green his numbers are. If you remember back to the previous slides... The midfield, there's a lot of greenness. A lot of points are expected here. De Bruyne, green. He's not had much. I think he's had like half an hour or half a game playing in the last couple of months. So it's quite likely the first few weeks he's going to get rested a fair bit. But when he's up and running and fit, he's an excellent player. So he's a bit risky to buy. If we knew he was playing and starting these first four games, he'd be an excellent buy. But we don't know that he is. So it depends what your appetite for risk is. But as we said, if you want to take a punt early on, now is the time to do it because you can make subs and wildcard. You don't have to use the wildcard to get out of it. You can just take transfers and take hits. Early on in the season, it's fine to be taking hits because you've got many, many weeks to get the points back. Rashford, 9 million. Man United, very good. Fernandez, 8.5 million. Odegaard, Arsenal, 8.5 
Saka, Arsenal, 8.5. Martinelli, 8. Madison, 7.5. Tottenham. So compared to the other... Um, I can say slides. Compared to the other players we've seen, there's an awful lot of green on this page. And by the way, these are all hopefully organised by price and then alphabetically. So I'm not suggesting here that Fernandez is better than Odegaard, better than Saka. It's just hopefully I've got my alphabet right. That's what that means. So you want to choose at least one of these. You want to choose at least one of these midfielders. Sterling for Chelsea. A little bit risky. Chelsea, Sterling historically is a very good player. Chelsea, I personally think, can have a very good season. He is only 7 million. He may do what Rashford did last year and have an amazing season. And no one's surprised because Sterling is actually very good. But he's a bit of a risk. But as we've mentioned before, if we get the team horribly wrong, just change the team. But their first game is home to Liverpool. It's feasible they're going to lose that 1-2-0 and no Chelsea players get anything at all. But equally, obviously, he could actually get a goal or an assist. As a for Crystal Palace, six and a half. You can see the colours are going closer to red now. And Bremo for Brentford. When I put this together, he was flagged as being potentially injured. If he has the flag when you're picking the team, which is like this little orange triangle, I would suggest you don't buy him unless the news reports are he's going to play or he's going to be sitting on your bench anyway. But six and a half is a lot of money to put on your bench this early in the season. So up to you. He is a very good player. And assuming he is fit, he should do very, very well. But being injured, if he is going to be injured, personally, I wouldn't buy him. Mitoma, or Mitoma, uh, Brighton Hove Albion, six and a half million. He's a very popular player. Brighton have a lot of very good players. We don't know what the rotation is going to be with their huge amount of attacking potential they've got. So... Um, Matoma is expected to start. He's expected to get a lot of minutes, but we don't know for sure. Gibbs White, we're getting a bit cheaper now. We need some cheaper options. For Nottingham Forest, he is a very good player. Casimiro for Man United. I did originally have Andreas at five and a half for Fulham, but he, he looks too dodgy and he might be off. And Casimiro is an excellent player. If he's fit and not banned, he should be playing. And he does occasionally get an assist or a goal. He does take up a Man United slot, but he is a good player. Unfortunately, he probably would be on your bench depending who you buy, but you may be able to have a team with a couple of premium players in and then he just helps you out because he's a little bit cheaper. He is not going to score as many points as Rashford or Fernandez, but he's cheaper. Lerma for Crystal Palace. He's wearing a Bournemouth top there, but he's moved. And Nakamba for Luton. Again, he's wearing a the wrong top there as well but don't worry about that he should be playing so even though Nakamba has got a lot of red there I think he should be playing he's probably going to get one or two points but he's going to be sitting on your bench and just in case one of your players doesn't play at least you should get one or two points regarding the forwards again two pages of forwards choose at least one from each page but you have to choose three in total Harland sea of green look at that I think about 85% of managers, maybe more, have chosen Haaland so far. Most of those are going to captain him. So you may want to think it's a great differential to go about Haaland, and that is a massive differential, or even having him not captaining him. That's another big differential. But you could well get stung. Now, if it happened you don't buy him, and you're lucky enough he doesn't get any points against Burnley or Newcastle, he probably will get dumped by a lot of managers and his price will go down. However, he could easily get 20 plus points in the first two weeks. So the safe move is to get Haaland. I have no bankers this season. That is, there's no one you have to buy. But if there was, if I was doing the banker system, I would put Haaland in there. So I strongly recommend you buy Haaland, but you don't have to. Kane. Kane's a bit dodgy because he may be off. And it may be before the weekend starts, we've learned that he's now left Tottenham. If he stays at Tottenham, he is a very good buy. It's going to be difficult to get Kane and Haaland both in your team, but it's not impossible. Or you may want to choose Kane instead of Haaland. Kane's first four fits, he's got Brentford, Man United, Bournemouth, Burnley. So he could do well. And he only finished a few points short of Haaland last season. Watkins. So because Jesus of Arsenal got injured, Watkins has become the most popular £8 million striker. 
perfectly good player. If he carries on like he finished last season, he's a good player to have. But 8 million you may find, trying to get all the players you want, that you can't quite stretch to 8 million for your second striker, or even your first striker. And a lot of the midfielders we saw are expected to maybe get more points than Watkins in the first few weeks. Wilson for Newcastle, a little bit dodgy because he is also a bit injury prone. Not as bad as James, but historically Wilson, especially at the beginning of a season, can do very well until he gets injured. So he would just be an alternative to Watkins. Of course, you could buy Wilson and Watkins. Darwin, an excellent player, very, very fast, gets into lots of scoring opportunities. Very, very, very hurtful to him last season. It may be because this is his second season, he's going to actually start putting his chances away and get lots of points. But equally, he could carry on where he left off and just nearly getting goals. So Darwin is a risk. But if he scores a couple of goals in the first three or four games, there's a lot of people probably going to pile into him. I think it might be quite difficult to get a team with Darwin in. But he's in here and he's an all right player. All the players I'm showing you, I'd be okay to own. I think, <laughs> or I wouldn't be showing them if I wasn't. Uh, and I am tempted by Darwin, but again, it's risky. But beginning of the season, we can take risks. And then there's Jackson for Chelsea. Normally, when a player comes to the Premiership from another country, more often than not, they don't do very well to start with. There are exceptions, obviously, Holland last season. So we don't know how Jackson's going to do. And Chelsea, for the last few seasons, have got an amazing habit of getting in good strikers and just making them rubbish. But they've got a new manager now. They may be all right. I am tempted by Jackson, but again, the money situation's a bit difficult. And obviously, he doesn't really look like a mule with a hat on. That's just a placeholder picture. And you want at least one of these forwards. Solanke from Bournemouth. Rissa from Brentford. Pedro for Brighton, who's wearing a Wolves top there. Pedro may well be first choice. He may get lots of uh, starts in which case he's going to be excellent and if he scores against Luton chances are loads of managers who haven't got him are going to buy him and he's only five and a half million so if you're unsure which cheaper striker to get I think he's worth getting if you end up playing him first week that's fine if he's on your bench at least when lots of people pile into him you've already got him and you get some money back from him as in his value would go up Adebayo from Luton, just because I think he should be playing the minutes, he would be one that would be sitting on your bench. Mubama from West Ham, again, he'd be sitting on your bench. He might only play half a game, but he should get some points. But he's only four and a half million. And remember, I'm recommending you buy at least, well, at least, you buy three of the budget players so that you've got a bit more money to spend elsewhere. So regarding the bench, the way this works is I'm going to show you the six goalkeepers in order the first keeper you see that you have goes onto your bench which means by default you'll be playing your other keeper so we don't care about the first 11 all we care about is the bench if we get the bench right the other 11 sort themselves out so if you bought Turner he's on your bench if you don't have Turner but you have Pickford put him on your bench if you have neither of those but have Flecken he's on your bench if you have none of those but you have Johnston he's on your bench if you have none of those, and I think you're in dodgy territory now because you shouldn't have bought two good keepers, you'd have Onana, so he'd be on your bench. Then it'd be Ramsdale, which means if you have Edison, you're definitely playing Edison. Now, I would not recommend buying two of Edison, Ramsdale and Onana. You should save some money. But it's your team. You do what you like. If you follow the system, you should be okay. I'm now going to show you the rest of the other players, but I've taken out, I think, 10 players of the 50 odd players we've looked at that aren't going to appear here so I'm going to show you if you've got this player there on your bench if you've not got them you've got this there on your bench so the first player you see takes position three on your bench the second player you've got that you see is position two and the third player you see goes to position one obviously it needs to be a legal formation so you can't put three midfielders on the bench you can't put three defenders on the bench you can't put three strikers on the bench or three forwards as they're called Hopefully that made sense. Now I'm aware these are very, very small. So I'll try and read out what the players are. And when we get halfway, we're going to be putting some very good players on the bench. So hopefully you've got three players from the first half that we look at here. 
So if you've got Nekumba, he's on your bench in position number three. And I just rattle them off now. Remember, you start position three, then position two, then position one. Bayer for Burnley. Mubama for West Ham. Adubayo for Luton. Colwell for Chelsea. Lerma for Palace. Porro for Tottenham, the enthusiastic one. Bulldog for Sheffield United. Gibbs White for Forest. Pinnock for Brentford. Darwin for Liverpool. Now, just so you know, when I'm talking about the bench order, these are my suggestions. If you want to go against the bench order because you love Darwin, you're going to make him your captain. That's up to you. That's fine. This is my suggestion for those that maybe want a bit of help. Then it'd be Casemiro, then Botman, Solanke, Akanji, Wissa. So we're getting on some good players here. And Buemo, Yao Pedro, James, Chilwell. Because if you spent five and a half million on James and or Chilwell, you're going to be itching to get them on the pitch. But what I'm suggesting is if you've not got three players yet on your bench, maybe you've got too many good players and you could top things around a bit. Saliba, Trent Alexander-Arnold, why would you spend eight million? And then he's your third worst player, but it could happen. Shaw, Stones, Watkins, Madison, Sterling, Jackson, Gabriel... Eze, Estupinen, Trippier, Wilson, Matoma. Now, there are some very good players on here. Hopefully you've got three players from the bottom half of this screen. But if not, don't worry about it. You don't have to change your team. If you've got 15 players and you like them, but it means you're putting, for example, Luke Shaw and Watkins on your bench, well, so be it. Maybe you've managed to find a good combination somehow. And then the final thing we look at is the captain and the vice captain. If you followed this series last season... I had this nice floating hat that came down and I've spent a fair bit of time trying to put this together because I've had lots of things going on over the summer which stopped me getting to this and I've not managed to do the floaty hat thing yet so I'm sorry about that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about. I will try and put the floaty hat in in the next few weeks but I've got a lot of work still to do on this system. If you have Harland, I strongly recommend he wears the old mule hat and he's your captain. If you don't have Haaland, but you have Rashford, he could be your captain. Other captain options, hopefully you've got at least one of these, would be Kane, Saka, Salah, De Bruyne. Haaland is the safe bet because most people are going to be captaining him. But you can make any of these your captain and any of these your vice captain. If you don't want to or you don't have two of these players, I would suggest you choose your best midfielder that you've got left. We have lots of very good midfielders. Just pick one that was actually quite expensive and it's probably going to do quite well. And that's your captain and vice captain. I'm, so, I'm sorry that took so long. I, I was resigned to the fact that the first video of the series is going to take a long time. Hopefully when we get in the season, these videos will be somewhat quicker. All right. Um, I hope that made sense. All the best. And I hope you'll be able to put a video out in a few days to see how all this went. Feel free to put any questions below. And yes, there are some very good players I missed out, but we have to. But we're just going for top 5%. We're not expecting to win the whole thing. Thanks for watching. Bye.